This game looks so great. When I first saw the art, oh. Wow. Hi. What is going on, Geeks Unite the Clans here, back in yo life with a brand new series. This is Firewatch. It is a game I am incredibly excited for. If you are brand new to this series or to my channel, Firewatch is a single-player, first-person mystery set in the Wyoming wilderness where your only emotional lifeline is the person on the other end of a handheld radio. That is the Steam blurb. It's about as short as it gets. I don't need to tell you anymore, guys. Let's dive into this game. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. We are going to be doing a full Let's Play of Firewatch, a new game. Now, I played the preview build that came out uh, earlier this week. I played it on my live stream. And uh, I didn't start recording. A lot of YouTubers started recording their episodes from that. And I didn't because I was worried that the demo might not start in the same place as the full game. And it looks, to me... Like it isn't. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. Now, I've learned from the demo build that that is where our main character is from. And Julia is the name of his girl. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby Colorado University at Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You are drunk. You, you're pretty. So what's your, uh, you know, major? You slur the word major, and it smells like Coors. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? <laughs> what a burn, you ask. She says definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later... You are Julia's boyfriend. Picking up chicks was so easy in 1975. Splitting cheeseburgers after that line? Use objects. That's our backpack, I recognize that. This clearly, an elevator. I bet that's our truck. I wanna explore, but I have an idea of where we're probably supposed to go. Orange truck, orange backpack, I like this guy's style. Orange beard. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's an also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while she's walking this dog. It's badass. You adopt the Shepherd and name him Mayhem. Mayhem's an excellent dog. He loves wrestling with you in the park and goes with Julia on her runs. Even though she's too big to bring, <laughs> he's too big to bring the school. Julia loves him all the same. Mayhem is a friend, a child, and a pet all rolled into one. 1979, you walk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids, they're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple of little idiots, that would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents aren't hitched. You say, she's absolutely right. So we got married, and here we are in the Wyoming wilderness. This is the setting for this game, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, the demo started right outside your Firewatch Tower, so we clearly have a ways to go. Where's the you are here? That was our lookout, right? Thoroughfare to thoroughfare lookout. I say we just start wandering. Not recommended for inexperienced hikers. Don't forget to check in, and no firewalks. That's cool. We got this. 
Oh, and I remember how to run, and it works like a charm. 1980. So Thursday night, and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. I'll get mad. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. She tells you to fuck yourself and to not be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. Be prepared for language in this game, guys. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model or you pose and flex like He-Man. I like the second one. Very nice. And here we are back in the wilderness. We're making our way to our tower. We're getting a little backstory as we do. This is kind of neat. And I, I honestly, I really considered starting recording episodes from the demo. A lot of YouTubers have their first four episodes out. And I'm sure it'll help them in terms of views, but... Um, I don't want to miss out on any of the story. Two Forks Lookout. Eight more miles. Jeez. There we go. Space bar right over it. Oh, wow. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking mayhem at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Mayhem runs away. Mamie Moof! Ha <laughs> ha! Did the dog! She yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking. You confront the attacker. Scare him away. I don't need to beat this fool's face in. You reach into your pocket. You've got a gun, and you threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984, that's the year I was born. My birthday was yesterday. Plans have to get kids. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Still, Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Oh. God, these are both so selfish. I'll go with the less selfish of the two. You ask if she'll commute. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if she's what you want. If it's what she wants, she agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. That is going to pull us apart. I should have begged her not to go. 1985, Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave. After having an episode, she lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember. She had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She didn't remember. She was found crying in a stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried. Guys, spoilers right out of the gate that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. And then how the hell do we end up in the frickin' wilderness after all this? Journal. Oh! There we go, posing like Victoria's Secret. Yeah, this is not a game for kids. Clearly, there was a hand-drawn penis in that image. <laughs> And our main character is very handsome. Mayhem is getting older. He's got silver hair down his back and slows down at night. You and Julia walk him to the bar to see your friends, and it feels like nothing has changed. She goes back to university. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger 
She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They're crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Back. 1988, you spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home, and it sits with you for a couple of months. Ah, these are very, very difficult decisions. That's a tweet from Campo Santo saying, Firewatch is out now. I'm recording this as soon as I possibly can. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. And... Here we go. Maybe that's why I end up out here. I'm not sure it's ever wise for one person to look after someone with that affliction. You feel like you're leaving the person behind, but... This game looks so great. When I first saw the art, oh, wow. Hi. See ya. Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day. Then every other day. You go to the bar with old friends. It is not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide not to see your old friends that much. Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. No. Months go by. Mayhem dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes she takes a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, she believes. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less. And seeing her less and less makes her forget you more. You think. Summer is coming up and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Enter the lookout tower. This is where the demo kicked off. And uh, this may be where we end episode, let's call this episode zero because there was so much backstory. We haven't even gotten into the game. We'll get up to our tower and we'll call it quits. And I'll make sure we get another episode out today, the ninth, the day the game comes out at least one more oh it's all boarded up i guess no one's been here all winter um cool look at that view that is un. hey there's another watchtower turn on the power yes i remember this no f oh right lights there we go hello two forks tower hello Let's get this radio and say hi to the second main character of the game. You don't play as her, but this is Delilah, I think. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. There we go. go We're ahead. gonna be guessing. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then can I what, sleep forever? Sure. If we're gonna talk okay, to her, go let's go have a look at her uh, lookout. How do I get over there? There she is. Okay. Uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. Brilliant. Ooh, very good. Bravo. 
Bravo, Henry. Okay, I sleep now. <laughs> okay, I sleep Not now. Quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. <laughs> good night. Welcome to the job. Geeks, thank you so much for watching this episode zero of Firewatch. In episode one, we will tackle day one. That's going to do it for this one. See you in the next one. Listen to this music. This shows you it's 1989. Found them in the lake, naked. Skinny dipping. Wow. Is that a guy over there? Oh boy. Enjoy dealing with that. I know you guys are setting up bottle rockets out here, okay? How? Because you're hiding in the bushes, spying on us. Shut it, kids. Hey, I see plenty of boobs.